like complications. The same in music. I like what is natural. To weave what the music demands, and I try to do my best. The same in life. And for me, this is civilization. What is unjust is bad. So we have to react, to accept or to refuse, but to act all the time. To live is not enough. We have to take part in what is good and do our best and speak and write. This is the duty of everybody, and more so the privileged people who have won the esteem of the world. During my lifetime, I have traveled many lands. I have found beauty everywhere. But the beauty of Catalonia has nourished me since infancy. And when I choose to close my eyes, I see the ocean at San Salvador and the seaside village of Sitges with the little fishing boats on the sand, the vineyards, the olive groves, the pomegranate trees that from the province of Tarragona, the river Jobregat, and the peaks of Montserrat. Catalonia is the land of my birth, and I love her as a mother. Pablo Casals was born in December 1876 in Vendrell, a village in Catalonia in northern Spain. Catalonia was Casals' homeland, and although he spent the last 35 years of his life in exile, he always felt a deep attachment to the place of his birth. Pablo's father was the organist for the church in Vendrell, and Pablo started playing music at an early age. First the piano, then the violin, and as soon as his feet could reach the pedals, the organ. But when he was 11, a trio of traveling musicians arrived in Vendrell bringing with them the most beautiful instrument Pablo had ever heard, the cello. From the moment I heard the first note, I was overwhelmed. I felt as if I could not <coughs> breathe. There was something so tender, so Casal's father knew from experience how hard it was to earn a living as a musician. But his mother was convinced that Pablo had a special gift and that everything should be done to nourish it. She decided that they must find a way to send their son to study the cello in Barcelona. And so they did. This, she knew, was what her son was born for. Casals spent his teenage years studying in Barcelona and in Madrid. He started out performing in a cafe, but before long, he was playing for Queen Maria Cristina. At the turn of the 20th century, he made his debut in Paris, beginning 30 years of concerts, playing everywhere. I was 23 years old at the turn of the century. It was a time of brave expectations. Many believed that the new epoch was at hand, that the dawn of the 20th century would prove to be a turning point in the affair of men. They said recent scientific advances 
predicted a future of great social progress, the era, they said, was approaching when poverty and hunger would at last disappear. In the way people make fervent resolutions at the start of a new year, the world seemed to be resolved at the start of the new century to undergo a change for the better. Who then foresaw the coming decades bringing unimaginable horrors of two world wars, concentration camps, and atomic bombs? Everything about us is in constant change. That is the way of nature. And we ourselves are changing all the time, for we are part of nature. We have a duty always to work to change ourselves better. 